so. We've been talking about several different things as to what is an altar. And uh, in that, if you haven't been here, please take time to go and listen to the recordings that were done the last two days, because I won't have time to go into all of that, because we know there's some dinner waiting, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> I believe the roast will be all right. Yes. You heard that before? I'll just give a, a brief recap so that those of you who have not been with us, you can kind of follow us because I use terminology that you may not be familiar with. So, as I'm doing this right here, I want you to understand that everything that I say is not copyrighted by Cliff Lara or a ministry. It is the Lord's. Amen. So yeah. if you want to record, if you want to take your phone and do whatever you want with it, it's the Lord's. You spread it far and wide. That's what he wanted us to do in the first place. Amen. He wanted us to spread it far and wide. So we don't take the liberty of saying, oh, you know, this is our record. No, I don't have a copyright on God. But he does have a copyright on me. I'm pretty sure he created me. <laughs> Amen. So praise the Lord for that. I'm, I'm always a little bit dismayed when I see so much being copyrighted that is the Lord's. Oh, yes. I don't, I don't, I don't yeah, want to speak don't negative in that, but I just say, uh, Lord, free those things up yes. in the name of yes. Jesus. Just free them up mm -hmm. so that we can see some things that, you know, yep. is to be. Today we're going to talk about the priesthood. Yeah. We're going to talk about kings and priests. That's who we are. A holy nation. Yes. A people set apart. Mm -hmm. You know, and through the prayer altar, or through the altar, we're going to see how does that operate, how do we operate as kings and priests. Yes. What did it look like in the days of old? What does it look like today? What are the differences? How do we utilize what God desires for us to do in our hearts today? In the Old Testament, the sacrificial system, and this is just my review had three things that made up the altar. It was a stone that wasn't hewn. It was a sacrifice. It was a fire that consumed what was on the altar. And that was an altar that really produced a lot of death. And so they would kill an animal or do whatever they did, and that blood from that animal became the sacrifice, and the flesh was burned away of that animal. And if your heart was in a good position, then it became a sweet aroma unto the Lord. But if it wasn't, mm -hmm. and you happened to be the high priest, it was in the Holy of Holies, then you would be stricken dead. And they would drag you out with a rope that they had tied to you. And then you would hear the call for the next priest to go in. And I'm sure you wouldn't want to be the second one. <laughs> so that's what it was. The altar was made up of those three things. But today, the elements of the altar are still there. The stone, which has never been moon, is you. You are the living stone. You've been made a living stone through Christ. You are now the living sacrifice. Your life is a sacrifice unto the Lord. It's your normal duty as a Christian, according to the Scriptures. And there is still the fire. The consuming fire is the Spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit. So all three elements are there for the altar. But now it is a living altar. It's not one of death, but it is one of life. We talk about hallowing the name of the Lord. Taking time to honor Him, to glorify Him, to exalt Him. Hallelujah. The Bible says that if you would lift up Jesus high, all men would be saved. In other words, you'd raise Him up and people can see Him. People yes. can know Him. Yes. It ought to be the thing that is coming out of your mouth. Yes. It is the Christ. <laughs> and so, as we hallow the Lord, we've told people in the last few days what the difference was in hallowing and praising and adoration. Praise is when we... We give God this, this thanksgiving that is in our hearts because He has done something for us. And so maybe He healed someone in your family and you praise God for that. Adoration is the things we already know about God and we're simply acknowledging them to Him. But hallowing is a revelatory place. It's a place where God has revealed Himself in a new way, in a fresh way. And now we take that and we exalt Him with that. Now that didn't 
come out of a ministry. That came out of Christ. His apostles asked him. At that time they were his disciples. And he <coughs> said to them, this is how you ought to pray. And so we know the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So his name is to be hallowed. Amen. We don't approach God as though he is a man. We approach him as God. And he has a process by which he loves to be approached. I don't think there is a person here who doesn't love to be approached by saying good things about you. It's kind of a wonderful thing. We just sang happy birthday to Mike, and I believe he was blushing. I thought I saw him. <laughs> <him. laughs> yes, I did. When he turned around, he had a little blush. He's blushing now. Praise God. <laughs> you know, these are the good things that well up the heart of an individual. Imagine what it does to the to the Creator Himself as, as people are hallowing Him across the world, across the land, even this morning. From house to house, they're hallowing the Lord. They're worshiping the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Praise the Lord. So I, I tell you this to say, there is no God like our God. He is the great I Am. When you think about that name, the great I am, you just you just say, well, who are, God, are you, are you God of this? I am. Yes. Are you the God of this? I am. Yes. You can put anything there and then just yes. end it with him. I am. I am. Are, are you the one who's going to restore? I am. Yes. Will you be the one who will pull me out of the grave? I am. Yes. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. You know, we're walking into a time right now, a season that begins today. What is today? It's actually Palm Sunday. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is the day whereby yes. Jesus rode into Israel yes. victorious. Waving yes. the palm branches. Can you imagine that? It says that he had a triumphant entering into Israel. That means that Jesus was already triumphant even prior to laying his body upon the cross. Yes. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Yes. This was a triumphant walk. This was a victorious walk. This was a recognition to the Christ. As he went to Israel. There he would become. The high priest. The one seated at the right hand of the father. All of these things would occur. He would gain the name. King of kings. And Lord of lords. Yes. Now I'm not talking about the priesthood yet. I just want to engage Christ a little bit. Yes. If you all don't mind. Mm -hmm. I love the Lord. And I love Christ. You know he is. He is all that I need. I, I, I don't know what you all need, but He's all that I need. It's all that I need too. Uh, and I praise God for that. You know, he has, he has done marvelous things. And in those marvelous things, we can see who He is. When it came to this, this day, when He rode on that donkey, you know, they didn't just lay palms on the, on the road. They laid some, laid there even a garment or whatever they could yeah. lay on the road. Uh -huh. Why? Because you see, the, the Jewish people yeah. had a custom. Yeah. And the custom was that if you were out and about and you came back into your home, the servant would come and they would wash your feet. They would wash the dust off your feet. Do you know that as he rode in triumphantly into Israel, they did not even desire that the dust of the ground would be upon him. Uh -huh. He would be honored. It was a way of honoring the yes. Lord. John 11, 25 and 26 says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Amen. Everything that he said, everything that he did inside the Gospels is for you. When you read the Gospels and you get to know the high priest, you get to know the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. You get to know the bread of life. It is there that you will find all of your identity. Yes, yes. It is there that you will even find some of your destiny. Yes. It is in Christ. in Christ. You know, in 1 Peter 1, 3, it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. This is the triumphant walk. He had already spoken many of these things, but now he is making a triumphant walk. 
You know what he's doing? He's walking. Have you ever seen this in a wedding? I'm getting a little excited. I'm sorry. <laughs> have you ever okay. seen this in a wedding where you look in the church and the wedding is about to start, but the first one is not the bride that comes onto that triumphant walk. It is the groom. Right. The groom comes and walks up. Oh yeah, and he's they, they stand there, you know, and they stand. And then usually there's a there's a there's a pastor or someone who is going to do the vows. It's like Christ was coming in. Yes. He was coming in. He was walking that walk yes. so that he could be prepared yes. and prepare the way yes. to receive his bride. And yet there was one standing there in covenant with him, and that was the Father. The Father, the yes. father was there. The Spirit of God was there. Yeah. Come on, Jesus. Take your triumphant walk. They don't know it, but you are already victorious and you've yet not even yeah. laid your life down yet. Yeah. That was to happen the next day he was to be arrested. Yeah. This is all happening in the day, but there's still a night to come where he will grieve and he will, his heart will be broken before the living God as a priest at Gethsemane. Yeah. Oh, this is a triumphant day, my friends. Yeah. Hallelujah. He was triumphant even before he died. Romans 6, verses 8 and 11. I'm not speaking on the priesthood yet, so I'm going to get there, though. <laughs> it says, Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Him. But we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, He cannot die again. That no longer has mastery over Him. This is some of the mastery that he had. He knew that as soon as he died, death would be done away with. Because he was going to rise again. You, Jesus. you know, there's something very interesting about Jesus Christ. When we go all the way back to Genesis. And we see the sin of the garden. We see that. And God said, I will create enmity between your seed and his seed. Meaning the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. Nowhere else in the Bible does it speak of the seed of the woman. Because the seed is found in the man. But for some reason God said the seed of the woman. What was he saying? He was revealing something. That there is going to be a seed in the woman that will not come from man. Yeah. Yeah. This seed is to be within a virgin. That's why he said seed of the woman. The seed of the woman was the Christ in a virgin. It was not a seed of a man. Had it been the seed of a man that brought forth Jesus, he would have come in sin. He would have been born in sin. But no, this seed was the seed that is also identified as the seed of Abraham. And so here it is, the seed within the woman, the seed of the woman. I shall put enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the father of lies. What shall he do? He shall crush your head. Yeah. He speaks to the serpent that way. And you shall bruise his heel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the Christ. Yeah. He's being formed mm -hmm. by the Spirit of God. Planted into the womb of Mary. Mm -hmm. yeah. As he is yeah. planted into the womb of Mary. I'm going to get to the priesthood, brother. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> as he gets planted into the womb of Mary... There's something different about him. He doesn't carry the DNA of sin. That's right. That's right. That's right. Are you seeing this? Thank you. From the very beginning of Christ, even in the womb, there is a difference of this one who is coming out of the womb of Mary. This one will have no sin. That's why his blood has such a power. That's why he can bring you into the resurrection. That's why he can bring you into a healing state. Because the DNA of this one has no sin. He has the perfect life. Thank you, Jesus. He is the God incarnate upon the earth. Amen. That's the triumphant walk into Israel. It's to let Israel know, Israel, the one whom, whom, whom will pay the penalty for your sin, is coming through. He's going down the aisle as the groom. Yes. He's yes. getting ready to take his position. Where is that position? Isn't it unique that when we see a wedding, we, we place the, the man here, we place the woman here. And so where is Christ placed? But he is placed at the right hand of the Father. And what does he do? He awaits his bride. Praise the Lord. 
I could stay on this all day long, I'm telling you. I could, because there's so much to be said about the Christ. The Christ is amazing. He, he, he's just, you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, And God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by His power. By His power. The triumphant walk that we know as Palm Sunday is not just any triumphant walk. It's the triumphant walk that now delivers the power of the resurrection to you. That now delivers the authority of Jesus Christ to you. That you may now walk as priests. See, we're starting to tie in. I tell you, it is amazing. In Philippians 2.8, it says, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, by becoming obedient to death, even death, on the cross. Can you imagine that? My friends, I tell you that the Lord says through Paul that we must also delight in the suffering of the cross. Yes. We must learn to take on even that. That we would bear even our own crosses yes. in the name of Jesus. He'll give you strength for it. He'll empower you for that. Do you know that Surrender in the full agreeance of God is literally death. You will be delivered out of this world through death. But by the power of the resurrection, that grave has no sting. It shall not hold you. And you will be in the presence of the Lord. According to the scriptures, to, be, to die is to become present with God. Praise the Lord. That's the hope, my friends. For all of you who've ever lost a loved one or someone and you're thinking that they're in your past, I've got news for you. They're not in your past. They're in your future. That is where they are. They're not in your past. Memories are in your past. But they are in your future. They're waiting on you. Are you hearing me? That's the hope of Christ. That's the power of Palm Sunday. It reveals all of these things. And it says to you, do you know? He is not here. He has risen. risen. Yeah. He ain't here. He's risen. That's according to Luke uh, 24. And, and I tell you this. He has risen and he is waiting upon us. Have I told you that a day of the Lord is but a thousand years? A thousand years is but a day of the Lord. And when we sing amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me when I've been there 10,000 years. It's only been a little over a week. Uh -huh. Are you with me? Uh -huh. yeah. Did you see the joy in this? That the time we have with God, we're going to be with Him a thousand years. And we just caught a day. We just caught a day. Uh -huh. Oh my goodness. How we, we will be able to savor the things of God. When you're with God, there will be such a savoring of the goodness of God. Yes, hallelujah. Now think about that. If you took 24 hours and you divided it into a thousand, then you would find out kind of what the simulation is between this time and the time of heaven. I tell you, those who've gone before us, the coffee won't even be cold, and there you will be before them, and they'll say, oh, when did you get here? <laughs> it will be that quick. Uh -huh. For us, it seems a bit longer. Oh, but your sorrows shall not flow all the way through the night. He has a way of taking sorrow and taking ashes and bringing them into beauty. Praise the Lord for that. Palm Sunday is a great day, my friends. Yes. It's a day that says, do you recognize the triumphant victory of Christ even before the cross? Yes. Uh -huh. That God had a plan to redeem you and I and all of His creation. Praise the Lord. You know, He wouldn't have been any of those things. The enemy certainly came after Him. For those things. You remember the temptation of Christ. Led by the spirit. Forty days in the desert. Fasting. Not eating. The enemy came to him three times. And he attacked three different things. He attacked his identity. He attacked his purpose. And he attacked his destiny. Uh -huh. Well I better stop. I'm, I'm, I'm moving into something else. I feel my heart moving, and it's moving in ways, and 
isn't even in my notes at all. It's just what's going on, you know, it's what's stirring in me. Because when I think about Palm Sunday, I get excited. You know what I mean? I get excited because I said, my goodness, my God was triumphant. Yes, hallelujah. The way has been made. The valley has risen. The mountains have come down. The crooked road has been made straight. He is the gate as well as the door. No one shall come to the Father except through Him. Uh -huh. Are you with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, when the disciples would go out and they would pronounce the gospel, they would share the gospel. They didn't share it the way we share it today. They didn't say, if you'd like to pray the prayer of salvation with me, Ooh. no. Huh. Yeah. They didn't do that. They use words like deny. Mm -hmm. That's right. In fact, the word said, if they deny me, then go to the outer part of the city and dust your shoes off. Yes. Right. Amen. It wasn't a whether you could believe it or agree with it, because it was the truth. The gospel is the truth. It stands alone. It doesn't need your recognition. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Just saying it. Yeah. Yeah. It is the truth. And He is the way. That's right. And there is no other way. So let me show you something really quick. Stand up for a moment. Stand up just for a moment. Everybody stand up. It won't take long. Come on, stand up. Thank you, Lord. Just stand up. I just want to show you something and let you feel the power of God. Now, in a moment, I'm going to ask you, are you born again? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? I mean, you've surrendered your heart to Him. And He has you solely in the palm of His hand. But I want you to know something. Because He is the way and the life and the truth. He is that. Because no one shall come to the Father except through Him. If you truly don't know Him, and you're not born again. You've not completely surrendered your heart. And when I say, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you are born again, then sit down. I want you to know something. I've been in houses of God where men sat. But when they sat, they denied the Christ. Are you with me? You see, if you don't truly know Him and you sit... That's what's going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. You deny yeah. the Christ. Yeah. But all it takes is for you to stand. That in itself is a confession yes. Yes. that you desire to know Hallelujah. the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Are you with me? I have watched men sweat. I have watched men shake because they could not sit. Because they did not want to deny the Christ. Mm -hmm. You see, that's part of that triumphant walk mm -hmm. that Jesus made in Israel. They all stood. Thank you, Lord. They believed. Uh -huh. And not all the Israelites were in that position. It's only a few days later that they're saying, crucify him. Uh -huh. yeah. That they would take a murderous man in the place of Christ. Not knowing that it was the Christ who was in the place of the murderous man. He was paying the price even for him. Barabbas. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Uh -huh. This is the Christ. This is the one who calls you to become priests and kings. Yes. A royal nation. A people set apart for his purpose. There is a priesthood that goes in the land. There are two priesthoods. And there's battles that have been created so that these priesthoods come together. Now this is a battle you didn't choose to be in, but you're in it. The day you became a Christian, you were in that battle. Yes. You didn't choose it, it chose you. See, there's the priesthood of darkness, and there is the priesthood of light. Inside of those priesthoods operate several different things. But I tell you this. The priesthood, get a hold of this now. 
The priesthood, who is active, controls the atmosphere. The one who controls the atmosphere controls the mindsets of the people. And so the people will respond to the priesthood. You see, the priesthood was given authority to be able to legislate or to make contract with the spiritual realm and the earthly realm. When we speak as priests, we literally can bind things and we can loosen things according to the scriptures. Yes. We can literally call forth a contract with the heavenly things and the earthly things That's and bring right. them together. That's right. Well, the dark priesthood does the same thing. Yeah. Every spirit desires a vessel in order to operate within the earthly realm. Right. That is why there is a thing called possession. Yeah. Yeah. People are possessed because that evil spirit cannot operate freely. It must have a vessel. Even the Spirit of God desires a vessel that it may operate upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And these are two priests that operate in the land. The good thing is this. It is not a one-to-one -one ratio. In other words, a godly priest can rise up and destroy many dark priests. Yes. Many at one time. Mm -hmm. You go and you look at the story of Elijah... I'll just lightly touch that story. And Elijah had been avoiding the king at that time. The king wanted to take him out. Because every time Elijah would prophesy, he would prophesy something that the king yeah. didn't enjoy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the day came when God said, go to him now. Call him forth. What was he doing? He was going to a place called Mount Carmel. And every priest must experience the Mount Carmel experience. Meaning, which God will you serve? Oh, there are a lot of gods. And sometimes we don't even realize that there are gods within our life that we serve. That our whole heart is not given unto the Lord. But Elijah said, call all of the Israelites and bring them. And bring the priests of Baal together. Let's gather them. It's time for a showdown. The showdown wasn't between Elijah as a high priest operating as that or the priests of Baal. The showdown was between the gods. These were just vessels. Do you understand? And Elijah said, let's do this. Let's prepare the sacrifice. Let's rebuild the altar. You know that Elijah had to rebuild the altar. To, to know that in the story is to know that the altar was in disarray. It is to know that the priests of darkness were operating in such a way that literally the mindsets of the people had been shifted to worshiping Baal. But now there was a priest who stood up in the land. His name was Elijah. And he rebuilt the altar. And he put the sacrifice upon the altar. And they did the same. They put the sacrifice upon their altar. And you go back and you read that story in 1 Kings. And I tell you what. Yeah. It's amazing the language. If you'll take up the language. And you'll read that story. Because Elijah begins to mock the priests of Baal. Yeah. Or Baal. Yeah. However you say it. And there they were. He said, look. Yeah, I love that story. Hmm. No, no, no. You don't get to put fire on this one. <laughs> Let's let the God of fire show up. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So if your God is truly a God, then he'll consume this offering. Mm. And if he's not, then he's not. But choose this day whom you're going to serve. Uh -huh. yes. If you believe in Baal, then believe in Baal. If you believe in God Almighty, the great I am, then believe in him. But let's see which God will respond. You know, they marched around that altar, talking about the priests of Baal, the priesthood of darkness. They did all kinds of things. They sang, they danced, they did all kinds of things. And Elijah began to mock them. Maybe if you cut yourself, <laughs> you know, show great sacrifice of your flesh, maybe he'll show up then. And they begin to cut themselves. Maybe he is asleep. Maybe your God is asleep. My Bible says that my God shall not slumber. He doesn't slumber. He doesn't That's sleep. Right. Uh -huh. He said maybe he is gone away. Maybe he's, you know, in a faraway land. 
My God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. Maybe, really, the wording is he's in the bathroom, the albano. <laughs> he mocked them and he mocked them. And then when he was done, he told them to go ahead and pour water all over the altar that he had prepared. All over it, all around it, dig a trench around it, fill it with water. I mean, let's just make this impossible to burn. Why? Because I serve the God of the impossible. Yes. Yes. You know, when he called upon the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the fire of God came down. Not only did it consume the sacrifice, but it consumed the altar. Yes. That's what God wants to do with the priesthood of life. He doesn't desire that just you shall be affected, but He desires that the fullness of you would be engulfed and on fire for the things of God. Yes. That where you go as a priest and you call upon the name of the Lord, atmospheres yes. will change. Hallelujah. People yes. will change. Yes. Healings will come. Hallelujah. The works of the kingdom yes. shall come forth. Mm -hmm. See, as priests, holy priests, we have an ability to bring people into the Mount Carmel moment. Do you know that is like one sharing the gospel and you say, whom will you serve? The Mount Carmel moments are here quite often on the pulpits of America when they share the gospel. That's a Mount Carmel moment. Which priesthood operates in the land? Which priesthood is controlling the atmosphere of this region. I often ask people this question and I say, what are the issues of this place? What are they? And sometimes I'll have meetings with pastors because we want to begin to come together and ask the Lord, how shall we disciple the region? Not a man, the region. You know that every time you speak, Every time you pray, every time you preach from a pulpit in this region, those words are not held inside the body or in this church building. They're no different than prayer. They reach the heavens. Right. They reach right. the atmosphere. Hallelujah. So can you imagine if the pastors of this region came together and said, we are the high priest of our land. Hallelujah. And they said, we're going to engage this month. We're going to engage you know, there are certain times of the year when the priesthood around the land engages in the same thing. We're in one of those weeks. <laughs> Passover week, coming into Resurrection Sunday, pastors all across the land are preaching similar messages. Yes. And the atmosphere is being filled with who the Christ is. Yes. If you notice, look around this week, you're going to see a different atmosphere within the region. Yes, yes, yes. Why? Because the Christ is being elevated yeah. by the priests mm -hmm. of light. Mm -hmm. When he said that I brought you out of darkness and I put you into the great light. He's not talking about you've been illuminated. Mm -hmm. As the people who think of those kind of... I call that witchcraft. Yeah. He's talking about the light of Christ. He's saying you have been brought into this light. This marvelous light. It is the light of Christ. Yeah. That's what you've been brought into. And when we come together and we come and we agree as a body, there's certain times of the year whereby God himself engulfs his body and says, you will honor my son. Yes. Resurrection Sunday is one of those times. Uh -huh. Passover. Remember what he did at Passover. He required that every Jewish home yeah, yeah, yeah. would do the same thing. And it is in those times that there is a great triumphant atmosphere of Christ within the regions. It's after those times that pastors get together and they begin to talk to one. So how, how was your service? How was your service? Yeah. How many did y'all have in your service? How many did y'all have in your service? Hey, how many got born again over there? Oh, is that right? So many baptized. Oh, that's wonderful. Fill the baptism. Yes. Call in the lost. You're coming into a season right now where God requires the priests of this land to rise up and present the gospel. Yes, amen. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. Don't tell me how old you are. Just tell me where you're going. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you're going to a place where God is, then don't leave others behind. Don't leave the next generation behind. Yes. Be the mentor. That Christ desires yes, to set forth 
that others may know. I talked to a few people about four months ago, and um, I would say that probably the youngest person that was there was about 72. And uh, they said to me, what can we do? What can we do? You know? I said, you're still talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. right. You found right. your way to this yeah. restaurant yeah. to eat. Which means you're mobile. I mean, 10 minutes at a Walmart. Yeah. Hey, uh, we're just here to pray. Is there anything we can pray for you for? Is there anything? No, we're, we're, we're not promoting any, you know, denomination or anything. We're just concerned citizens of the kingdom. And we yeah. just want to pray for people. So if there's anything I can pray for you for, yeah. please give me the opportunity. You see the servant heart of Christ. There's courtrooms all across this nation. There's courtside ministry, a ministry that is across the nation that does this. Do you know how many people are in a difficult position when they're walking into a courtroom? Yeah. Yeah. Even if for a traffic ticket. It's like, man, I've got to go in here and if I don't, something doesn't happen, I'm going to have to pay $150, $200. Boy, that's going to really impact my funds for my family. They need hope. They need the Christ. What will we do as priests in the land? You know, God has been working on this a long time. Let me close with some comments. I don't want to keep you too long. Although, I do know this. I know that sometimes when I'm speaking or I'm preaching or I'm teaching, however God has me moving, that as I go, I get to a place where you believe I'm done. And then I say, Lord... <laughs> Let them know I have a liberty also. Amen, you do. So let the Lord have his liberty. Amen. <laughs> you know, the priesthood is a very interesting thing in that the priesthood dates all the way back to the days of Abraham. It actually dates all the way back to Genesis when the fall of man came. You see, the very first one to make the sacrifice was God Himself. There in the garden, as He came back to the garden, He said, where are you? Boom. Kind of hiding. Why are you hiding? Because we're naked. Who told you you were naked? Did you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? She fed it to me. <laughs> he deceived me. I mean, they, everybody has a story. Uh -huh. Everyone has an excuse. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, God said, Cursed is the earth for your sake. That's what he told Adam. Mm -hmm. Cursed is the earth for your sake. He did not curse man. Though we know that we have the curse of death, that was man's choice to take. Yeah. Yeah. That was the price they earned. For well, the wage of sin is death. They earn that. They work for it by eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God said the day you eat of that tree, surely that day you shall die. Dust you came from, and dust you shall go. It's a very interesting thing. There is this law that operates within the priesthood called sowing and reaping. Even all the way back in the garden, there was a sowing and a reaping going on. That's right. But the two priests were operating. The priest of darkness, whom was Satan, but the great high priest, which was God, was also operating. Mm -hmm. And he has full authority over that. Yes, he does. Don't forget this. Satan is a created being. He is not a God. That's right. He cannot be omnipresent. That's right, that's right. He cannot engage just on his own. He needs permission from God. He has authority over him. In that day of sowing and reaping, you can look at these, this priest of darkness, if you may say, and this priest of light and how they operated and how they fought for creation. 
You see, the serpent knew something. He knew if he could get Adam and Eve to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that day would, they would surely die. But not only that, that would corrupt the seed of man, and everything that would be born after that would be born in sin. That's what he was trying to sow. Uh -huh. He said, if I get them to do that, I'll sow that, and, and that's what will be reaped. What will be reaped? Death. Why? Because I don't like these people. Why? Because they are the image of God. See, it was God who said, let us make man in our image. And he did. He didn't like the increase of the image of God being upon the earth. So the serpent decided he was going to sow these things. You watch these priesthoods in their first battle. And what happens? It looks like the serpent wins. But if you listen to the words closely, you'll find out he didn't win. He not only lost, but he got to eat what he sowed. Now let me just, I'm not going to read all the passages because it would take us too long. And i got to get a little farther. Are we okay? Yeah. When it came to the time after the fall of man, the serpent, I'm pretty sure, thought, I got him. They ate of it. See, I befriended Eve. That's what he did. He said he was cunning. You know, the Bible says he was like good looking. He was charming. He was persuasive. Mm -hmm. And he befriended her. That's why God said, I'll now put enmity between your seed and her seed. Meaning, enmity is an equal hatred. A strong hatred toward one another. Because there wasn't that. And that's why she was deceived. Yeah. But now there is. And he said something to Adam. He said, All the days of your life you shall work this ground and you're going to eat by the sweat of the brow. And from the dust you came and to the dust you shall go. So what happens to man when he dies? He becomes what? Dust. Keep that in mind. He becomes what? Dust. dust. What was he created from? Dust. 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 Animals were created from dirt or the ground. But man was created from dust. It was a refining that God did with man. Yeah. Not the same as animals. You go and read that. Some people don't realize that. And they've read over that several times. But then he said to the serpent, All the days of your life, you shall crawl upon your belly and eat the dust. Do you hear me? Listen to this now. Sowing and reaping. What a man sow, he shall also reap. That's also in the spiritual. That's a kingdom principle that never goes away. That's right. Amen. Okay? Amen. Listen to this now. He, the enemy sowed death. God said to Adam, dust you came from, dust you will go. You will become what? Dust. That is a reflection or an image of death. But then he said to the serpent, on your belly you shall crawl all the days of your life and you shall eat the dust. Do you see it? You sow death, you will eat it all the days of your life. That's what you get. And I will put enmity between your seed and her seed. So he lets the devil know right there, right immediately. You see, the priest of light always has a way out of darkness. Yeah. Because yeah. he walks in light. Yeah. He doesn't stumble. Mm -hmm. And he was saying to the serpent, You created death, but I create a way out of darkness. See, the serpent forgot that in the beginning, in the beginning, God said, let there be light, and there was light. He didn't turn on a switch, but he literally brought light out of darkness. That's a big clue as to who your God is. Yeah, yeah. When he operates with the priesthood, he says to the priesthood, do you know that you can bring light out of darkness? You can bring people out of darkness, out of the bondage, out of the prisons, and bring them into the marvelous light. What marvelous light? The Christ. The priesthood has a purpose 
It has a specific purpose to see the souls of men be saved, as well as all creation. The Bible says that all creation groans for the sons of God to rise up. Why? Because it is the, the literal creation is waiting for the shepherds of God, the priests of the land, to again begin to nurture and make agreement with heaven that it would be blessed. We can literally go around and we can bless the ground. Yes. Speak to the ground you live on. Speak to the place where you live. Go outside and begin to speak to the land. Literally. Like a person. I don't know whatever happened to you, land, but I can tell you now, I plead the blood of Christ over you. I cleanse you of all things and all foul things that have come across you throughout history in the name of Jesus. And I command you to be blessed. I speak to the ground and I say to the ground, resist the enemy. Resist all sin. Don't let it enter here. Because God gave the ground a way to reject man. You see, when man sinned, he said, Curses the earth for your sake. And literally, it says that the ground began to produce thorns and thistles. That is a rejection toward him. Uh -huh. yeah. You don't want to set your hands in there. What's it doing? It's rejecting you. The high priest and the king. The first time we see that in the Bible, where we see a priest and a king being mentioned, it is literally in the time of Abraham, and it is after there has been a great, uh, a great war with the kings, with Abraham, and he is now returning back home. And he comes across a man called Melchizedek. Yes. He is the high priest, as well as the king of Salem, which yes. is Jerusalem now. That's what he was. It said that he had no genealogy, no mother nor father. Mm -hmm. He was like an a Christ. Yeah. And what did he bring out to Abraham? He brought him bread and wine. The elements. Yeah. That's what he brought him. And Abraham gave Melchizedek 10% of the yeah. spoil. He tithed it to Melchizedek. And according to the scriptures in the New Testament, it said that when he did that, he released the Levitical priesthood. It was in his loin. In other words, there were people who were going to be born through him that would become the Levitical priests. And the priests would be in the land. But Melchizedek is not like a Levitical priest. He's not. Because he's one without genealogy. It's a picture, it's a foreshadow of the priesthood today. You see, when you are of the Melchizedek priesthood, when you are of the priesthood of Jesus Christ, you have no genealogy. That doesn't mean that you don't have a mother and a father, and I'm, it didn't mean that then either. It means that you're of a priesthood that is not identified with human elements. When you are born again, you are born in Christ. Are you with me? You are no longer of this world, but you are now of the kingdom of God. So you are no longer one with mother or father. You have no genealogy. No, your genealogy is in Christ. Are you seeing this? That's what's going on. Melchizedek is a king and a priest. Now that's something that would normally not happen. You would not see them be a king and a priest. But that's who we are. We are kings and priests. We are people who are to take territories yes. Yes. in the kingdom. We are people who are to make contracts with the kingdom of God as we declare, as we pray, as we provoke the word of God to come out of our mouth. Yes. We are a people who can push back darkness out of our regions. We are a people who can call upon the name of the Lord and see the blind see, the lame walk. Yes. you got to believe it. Disciples asked Jesus, how shall we do the work of the kingdom? He said, believe in the one who has come. If you, can't, if you can't believe that, go back and read the stories of the gospel. Sit down in one city and go through a gospel. And say, God, what does this mean? Are you able to do this now? The answer is yes. yes. 
In fact, Jesus said, you will do greater things. Greater things. I asked the Lord, what does that mean? What can I do that is greater than the Christ? How could he say such a thing to his disciples? You will do greater things. You know? Thank you, Lord. He says it. Yes, says it. He said it. It doesn't mean that you're going to do more healings than he did as an individual. He's speaking of the one man. He's speaking of the body of Christ. Yes. He's saying, there will be many more souls brought into the kingdom yeah, yeah, yeah. by the one man mm -hmm. than this one man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. You. you see, the priesthood needs to rise up. Yes. We're in an yeah. hour now we where darkness yes. Yes, is seemingly increasing. Yes. But I can tell you this, when darkness comes, the smallest light, yes. the smallest Small light, light will ignite. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, hallelujah. Are you with me? Amen. When we look at Melchizedek, we look at a priesthood that has its genealogy in God, not mankind. Yeah. We are kings and priests. We, kings. we have no genealogy. Our genealogy is now Christ. Yeah. We have been given from this DNA into the DNA of Christ, the DNA that carries no sin. You want to know why he can heal? Because he has no disease in him. He doesn't have the DNA of sinful man. He doesn't have it. That's why he could walk victoriously on that day of Palm Sunday. Praise the Lord. As high priest, you have a decision to make. Will you raise up an altar? Will you saturate in the Word of God? Meaning you will take in large portions of Scripture. Five, ten chapters at a sitting. Not to do it legalistically, but to know who your God is. That's the challenge. Do you know your God? All scripture was designed so that you would know your God. Yes. Will you open the Bible yet again and go through the ancient words that God has set forth upon the earth and take them in and say, who is my God in this? And see who he is. So often we read the Bible, but we forget to ask that question. Who are you, God, in this? In the story of Melchizedek, you see who he is. He is a God who has no genealogy. He is of the kingdom of God. I tell you this. There is no one like your God. He is your strong tower. He's your healer. He's your redeemer. He is your salvation. Yes. Roxanne, salvation of the Lord shall come to your household in the oh, name of hallelujah. Jesus. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Bring it, Lord. Bring it. That's going to be in my house. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Lord. Not because I said it. Yes. It's because His word shall not return void. That's right. That's right. He said, if you ask for the salvation of your house, it will come. Bring it, Lord. Yes. Bring it. You must believe. Come back to the place of believing. Step away out of unbelief. Yes. The covenant that God made with Abraham is an incredible covenant. Thank you, Lord. This is in closing. You know when He made that covenant with Abraham, it's the same way He made the covenant with you. You didn't do a thing for it. Neither did Abraham. Well, He prepared the animals. He cut three animals in half. He cut one bird in half. And, or excuse me, he didn't cut the birds in half at all. He had a pigeon, he had a dove, but he cut the three animals in half. And each animal represented a progressive covenant. It's an amazing thing when you study out that particular incident whereby God said to Abraham, because Abraham is like, how will I know that this is going to happen? That you're going to multiply my family? How will I know? He said, I'll make covenant with you. When God makes covenant, He declares a contract that cannot be changed even into the thousands of years. When you as a high priest come in the name of Jesus and you begin to bind and you begin to loosen, it creates a contract That's within God. the kingdom of God Hallelujah. and it cannot be broken forever. Yes, Lord. That's what Jesus said. 
I give you the keys of the kingdom. And he did it at the gates of Hades. When they were in Caesarea of Philippi, he was with his disciples. There they were at a place where they worshipped false gods. It was known as the gates of Hades. And he said, I give you the keys of the kingdom, that which to loosen and that which to bind. And I tell you, the gates of Hades shall not prevail against you. Now, if God said that the gates of Hades will not prevail against you, it means the gates of Hades are going to come against you. You need to be prepared. Yeah. Are you with me? We see darkness increasing in this day, but I tell you the truth. The truth is the Word of God says you have the ability to bind and to loosen. Now most people only want to think about binding like I bind this demon up or I bind this thing up and I cast it out. But I tell you, you ought to use binding for the good as well. I bind the promises of God to my heart. I bind the word of God as I read it into my mouth. I bind it into the meditation of my mind and I shall keep it with me all the days of my life. Oh God, that you would speak to me like you spoke to Joshua. That the words of your meditation shall never depart out of me day, afternoon, or night, but I will serve you with all my heart. My house shall serve the Lord in the name of Jesus. Priesthood ought to get excited. We are in a position to radically change the world as priests. Do you know that all you got to do is get in that word Read a few chapters. Maybe you'll be in Daniel someday. And you'll see these three young boys who became men. Meshach, Shedrach, and Abednego. And you're going to hear the idols of the land rising. And it's going to ask you to bow down. And you'll be like Meshach, Shedrach, and Abednego. And you'll say, I will not bow to you. But I will only bow my knee to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'll not bow my knee to another. I'll stand before the Lord. And I will know that my knee only bowed to Him. Man, when you read that story, you need to ask God, who are you? Yeah. You know, when Nebuchadnezzar created that great idol, he said to the whole world, to all languages, to all nations, when you hear the harp, the lyre, and all these different instruments, you're to bow down and you're to worship this. Do you know that would be equal to me raising something that's an idol in this church and say, when you hear this, that, and the other, you need to worship that. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. And you know them three young men? They weren't boys at that time. 18 years had already gone by and they didn't bow. Oh boy, that made a few people mad. And Nebuchadnezzar said, make the fire seven times hotter. Uh -huh. yeah. And he said, now I'm going to give you an opportunity here, young men. But if you worship me, you worship that idol. You won't be tossing in that fire. He said, no matter whether God delivers us or we burn in that fire, we will not bow our knee to another. And what did they do? They bound them up from their feet clear to their turban. It wasn't just their hands. They wrapped them up. They were like mummies. And then they took the men of valor. That was the, the strong men of their armies. And they lifted them up and they threw them into that fire. And when they were thrown into that fire, it wasn't but a moment later that Nebuchadnezzar had sight upon them. And I'm sure they had sight upon him. And they were walking around. <laughs> And he said, how many did we throw into that fire? He said, well, we threw three in there, Nebuchadnezzar, O king. He said, well, I see four, and one is like the Son of God. And there he is. He's walking around with them. You know, those men didn't walk out. They kept walking. I believe they were waiting for the fullness of the testimony to hit Nebuchadnezzar's heart. Hey, how you looking at us there, huh? How do we look? You see, I believe that not only was the son there, but the father directed the spirit of God, the consuming fire, to surround those men. Because it is not like the fire of man, but it is a fire of God. Yes. They were protected. Yes. You know, he then shouted, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, come out. They came out of that fire, and according to the scriptures, not only were they not singed, but they didn't even have the smell of smoke upon them. I tell you what, if I get around one person smoking a cigarette, that gets on me real quick. And I don't like it. But not even a singe of smoke was on them. 
And he said, surely your God is the most high God. If anyone comes against or speaks against... Now listen to this. This is a carnal king saying these words. That's what God can do in a moment. If anyone comes against this God of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, or says anything against him, not only would he destroy their houses, but he would create in a heap of ashes and with the people as well. What? Revival breaking out of a carnal king. Now when you hear a story like that, you've got to ask the question, who is God in this story? Don't yeah. get excited simply because of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Don't get excited because Nebuchadnezzar said that. Get excited because you see who God is. Yes, hallelujah. He is the God who is the consuming fire. He is the God who breaks the bondage. Don't forget they were bound up and now they're walking. He is the God who destroys the strong men. Don't forget it was the strong men who threw them into the fire. He is the God who gives revelation. He's the one who put it in the mouth of Nebuchadnezzar that I now see even one like the Son of God. How did he know who he was? Are you with me? You've got to ask the question, who is my God? And let him reveal himself from the stories of the Bible. Now you can walk through your day. And as you walk through your day, you've got a point of reference in your heart. Because you saturated in the word. Because you talked to the Holy Spirit. And he taught you who your God is. Yeah. Now something comes your way and you say, hold on a minute. I know my God. You see, my God, he doesn't carry me into bondage. No, he breaks the bondage. Right. I don't know about yeah. you, brother. I don't know about you, sister. But I can tell you, you can break that bondage. Yeah. It can leave you in a moment. You just got to believe. I don't know how you pray. Thank you, Lord. But I love to pray in the name of Jesus. Yes. Do you all pray in the name of Jesus? Yes. Yes. Or do you pray in the name of Jesus? Now catch that. Do you pray in the name of Jesus or do you pray in the name of Jesus? It's two different things. He said, depart from me for I never knew you, you soul of iniquity. But I did this in your name, Lord, I did that in your name. Depart from me for I never knew you. You see, you can pray in the name of Jesus, but unless you pray in the name of Jesus, that is in the position of Christ, you have no merit in the kingdom. That's a position. That's not just a name you're using. That's you being positioned in Christ, seated with Him on high. Mm -hmm. That you may operate by the authority of Jesus Christ, given unto you as priests of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. Let me pray for you. Mm -hmm. Father God, great are your ways. Mm -hmm. There is no unlike you. We thank you, Lord, that you came and you had that triumphant walk on Palm Sunday. And yet you laid your life down. It led you to Good Friday. It led you through the crucifixion that we might see the resurrection of life. We thank you, Lord, for your mission. And I just ask you now that you would torch the altars of our hearts. Yes. Cause them to burn mightily. Yes, Lord. Yes. We would understand our position in the name of Christ. We would not waste the authority by which we have in the land yes. as priests and kings. That we would be a holy people set apart mm -hmm. in this nation, calling people out of darkness and into your marvelous light. Setting the captive free. Releasing the prisoners. Loosening them from the grip of Satan. God, I pray that in every heart here, that you would cause them to move. You would cause their hearts to rise up, to bring glory to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I pray, God, that the branch, this house, as a branch on a vine, would become heavy with fruit. The fruit of the kingdom. Yes, Lord. That those yes. who come through these doors may eat of your good fruit. Yes. I pray, God, that every person's mouth will reflect the words that they have meditated upon. The 
the words of their heart where you have written the scriptures in every man and every woman. God, that they would have a point of reference because they are saturated in the word. As they are calling upon the name of the Lord to know who you are. God, reveal yourself and make your son's reward great through all of us. Yes. Let us not walk in fear, but let us walk in light. Yes. That we shall not stumble as those who walk in darkness. And so God, prepare us. Prepare us that we may go. That we may be a people who say, send me. Fill the house, my God, and make it a house of prayer. And let the increase of the reward of Christ multiply. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the